I'm gonna tell you some harsh truths about success that only successful people know, but probably won't tell you. And I know I'm not exactly Warren Buffett, but a few years ago, I set myself a goal of running a successful drop servicing business so I can travel the world and live life on my own terms. And yeah, I achieved that. And right now, my drop servicing businesses make well over seven figures a year, and I've ticked a ton of countries off my travel list. But over the years, I've learned some pretty unexpected stuff about success things I could never have anticipated. And if I could, you know, turn back and tell myself the things that I'm about to share with you in this video, I would do that in a heartbeat. I'd save myself so much time, energy, and money, but seeing as that's impossible, I'm telling you instead. So here are the 10 truths about success that you absolutely need to hear, even if you may not want to. I didn't know it at the time, but when I set myself the goal of running a successful drop servicing business, it was basically because I thought, you know, it would make me happy, right? But one thing I don't often tell people is that it didn't work, not completely. I'll be honest, right? My life is much better now than it used to be. I don't worry about money anymore. I live my life entirely on my own terms. But of course there are things, you know, I still struggle with. I'm a normal human being. Running a business is really no picnic. Managing a team has its drawbacks and traveling can be a pain in the ass sometimes. Now, I wouldn't trade it for the world, but I've adapted. This is just my new normal. It's like buying a new car. You get really excited about buying it, but when you finally do, you enjoy it for like two weeks, but you know, then you adapt to it and it just becomes the car that you drive. So why does this happen? Well, because I'm really into psychology, I did my research and learned psychologists actually have a name for this. They call it hedonic adaptation or the hedonic treadmill. This describes how we become numb to new stimuli and pretty soon we readjust and go back to our emotional baseline. And once we've adjusted, the stimulus needed to create an emotion like happiness or excitement needs to be more intense than the last one. And that's why people can go mental when it comes to buying cars. They're on a treadmill where they need bigger, better, faster, more expensive in order to feel the same enjoyment they felt when they first bought their you know first car banged up Nissan this effect has been studied like crazy and the results have been a bit mind-blowing to be honest for example who do you think is happier someone who won the lottery a year ago or someone who lost the use of their legs in a car accident obviously the lottery winner right I mean well hold your horses because according to a study conducted in 1978 lottery winners and paraplegics were roughly as happy as each other a year after the event so I'm sorry to say that earning ten thousand dollars per month or whatever your goal is won't solve all your problems it will improve your life in every way especially if you're broke right now so that doesn't mean you shouldn't go after it but it does mean that you should adjust your expectations because life is still life you'll still have challenges that success can't solve be prepared for that and when you learn that your success didn't solve every problem in your life don't drown yourself in cheap vodka probably more likely expensive vodka just keep going and don't stop growing here's something good to know just as we have a tendency to overestimate how happy things will make us we overestimate another thing how hard things will be the the Stoic philosopher Seneca once said that we suffer more in imagination than in reality. And I really agree with him. And this imagined suffering, things like fear and dread, screws us in big ways. I mean, one way is that it causes us to procrastinate. By exaggerating the challenge, we avoid doing what we know we should do. And the longer we procrastinate or avoid doing something, the more painful it becomes in your head, right? It's like a vicious cycle. However, you know, when you actually take action, the discomfort is nowhere near as bad as you thought it would be. And the problem with dread and fear is that it holds you back from actually taking on big challenges, taking action. But what you'll find is that no matter how big the challenge, you will always adapt to it. And I'm sure you've probably been through some challenging things in your life, right? You adapted, didn't you? And this is no different, okay? So if you're holding off on setting big goals and getting after them, remember that the path to success is not as hard as you think it will be. And when unexpected challenges come your way, you'll adapt. You're a resilient little monkey and you can handle way more than you think. So set some big goals and go after it. Life is, you know, really too short not to. 
What I'm about to say might be hard to believe. You'll probably resist it or call bullshit. You might even get pissed off at me. But before I tell you this, I want you to remember something. I want you to be successful beyond your wildest dreams. This is why I have this channel in the first place. You being successful would be the best result that I could hope for. But sometimes I might need to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. So keep an open mind and consider what I'm about to tell you might be true. Here it is. If you've always tried struggled for money, if you've never earned beyond a certain amount, if money has always been a source of struggle, pain and frustration, then it's because on some level you're choosing it. A part of you is attached to being broke and pushes wealth away. You resist being a wealthy person. This sounds like some new age woo woo bullshit, that is until you learn a little bit about a field of psychology called self image theory. The basic premise is that we all have an image of ourselves that's created from our past experiences and conditioning. It's our idea of ourselves. Everyone has one and the idea of ourselves feeds our thoughts, emotions and behaviors. But here's the interesting bit, okay? We're always acting in alignment with the image that we have of ourselves. Our self image can be a prison that keeps us stuck or it can be a paradise that makes success easy. So for example, if your self image is somebody who's broke, who's always struggling for money, you'll act in ways that keep you broke. That's because the mind loves consistency and hates contradictions. Acting in one way and thinking in another creates anxiety, stress and confusion. In fact, the term used to describe the state of anxiety is cognitive dissonance. It's when you try to hold two opposing ideas in your mind at once. And there's one more thing your mind loves but keeps you stuck. Familiarity. If you've always thought of yourself as broke, it's probably become a kind of familiar comfort zone. Even though you tell yourself it sucks and you've been broke your whole life, if you won the lottery, it would probably be overwhelming. 70% of lottery winners go broke within a few years. Maybe that's because they got a ton of money, but their self image doesn't update anywhere near as fast. Pretty soon they self sabotage the situation and go back to the comfortable identity as a broke person. And it's like an old comfortable coat they refuse to throw away. I'm not saying that other other outside factors don't contribute to financial problems. Not at all, they obviously do. But I am saying that these things are secondary. Wealth and abundance are more of an inside job than most people would have you believe. So if you want to start attracting high levels of wealth into your life, maybe you need to look at your self image. Is it hurting you or helping you? Start thinking of yourself as being the kind of person who takes action needed to generate wealth every day. You don't need to fool yourself and tell yourself that you'll become rich when you aren't, that'll just make it worse. But you do need to build the mental habit of affirming your identity as a person who generates wealth. Try saying to yourself, I am taking the actions every day that allow wealth to flow to me. And you'll notice how this starts to build a new self image. You'll feel weird in the beginning because you don't truly believe it. But pretty soon, you'll start to notice that you naturally start taking actions that lead to more wealth. It's kind of like magic. One thing I realized as I started taking my goals seriously is how hard it was to stay focused on them. Honestly, it was quite scary when you know I realized that pretty much 95% of the things in my life were unessential. They didn't contribute to my overall vision. In some cases, they even took away from it. And it was like my life was a car windshield covered in mud to the point where I couldn't even see the way forward clearly. Things got way easier though when I started cleaning that windshield, okay? And you'll notice this too. Success comes to those people who are willing to say no to basically everything. It's not about what you can add to your life, it's mostly about what you're willing to drop. And this will increase the one thing that you absolutely need to succeed and that's focus. Let's talk about that for a moment, okay? For the past 50 years, IQ has been seen as the strongest predictor of success, but that's changing fast. Now don't get me wrong, intelligence is still important, but nowhere near as it used to be, okay? There's something far more important than IQ today, and that's focus. If you can't focus, you're toast and jam, okay? Peanut butter as well. There are countless people with high IQs who are incapable of focusing on one thing for a long period of time to see any results. If you made me place a bet on the entrepreneur with a high IQ and poor focus versus the entrepreneur who had the ability to go narrow and deep on a project, I'm 
completing everything on the entrepreneur who's focused every time. Today, there's just too much to focus on. Those individuals who can actually focus and work deep, they're on the path to success and everybody notices. The attention economy further grinds our attention spans into dust. And a game-changing book that really hits home with this message and will change your life is the book, The One Thing by Gary Keller. Read that book and take massive action to simplify your life. Focus on one or two essential things in your life at any time and let go of everything else and you'll notice more progress in three months than most people experience in three years. There's one worldview that's shared by pretty much every unsuccessful person on the planet. And this worldview is one where helping other people hurts you because it takes from what you have. This perspective sees the world as a giant cake. Every piece of the cake that you have is cake I don't have. So in order for you to win, I have to lose. Any resources you have, you need to cling to and fight for. This is a mindset of scarcity. With this, you believe that there isn't going to be enough cake to go around and you're afraid of losing the cake that you have. It's driven by fear and it poisons pretty much everything you do. Now, let's flip the script and consider what a successful abundance mindset looks like, okay? From an abundance mindset, there is not only one cake, but infinite number of cakes or pieces of cake. If you want more, you make more. And from this perspective, helping other people actually helps you because it makes the system better for everyone. It's also building relationships, trust, and confidence when you're playing from an abundance mindset. You're much more likely to be creative, you're having more fun, you're continuously creating value for people instead of hoarding it, instead of fear, you're coming from a place of collaboration that creates more opportunities. This leads to massive success and wealth generation on a whole new level. Most people come from scarcity, do the opposite. For example, I love to share my best insights with you on this channel, and I've been advised by some people to keep these things behind a paywall. I don't, okay? That's because doing so would be based in scarcity, and that's not how success works. Here's a quote. The best time to start was yesterday. The next best time is now. And that quote came from, uh, to be honest, I don't really know. I read it on Instagram, one of those random posts. But the point is, if you're putting off something because of some imaginary perfect time, you're actually caught in a pretty toxic trap. It's the belief that you can't possibly do it now and you need to wait until your ducks are all in a row. And this is toxic because it will cause you to waste so much time that one day you're going to look back full of regret and wonder what, where the hell did the time go? You know, what could have been? You don't want to be that person. Person. And the truth is, there will never be a perfect time to start. Sure, you probably don't want to go traveling when you're 40 grand in debt, but there are better and worse times to start. But if you're chronically procrastinating on starting and constantly saying one day, then you aren't being rational. You're avoiding taking a risk because you're afraid. And I get that, right? You know, consider this though. Life is short. And when you really think about how finite life is and how we'll all die one day, the only fear that makes any sense is having lived a life where you never did anything that you were proud of because you were constantly waiting. So if this is you, do yourself a favor, stop waiting. Think of something on your bucket list and take the most important step that you can possibly take, the first one. One of the biggest ways we've been conned as a society is the idea of retirement. Basically, most of us have been convinced that working a job you hate for 40 plus years is worth it because eventually you're going to be able to relax and enjoy a cruise or two. What they don't tell you is that by the time you're retired, your body is battered, your soul is drained from a life of unfulfilling work, and you've essentially traded your most youthful years for money. And it's hands down the worst deal you could ever make. Retirement as a goal is bullshit. And alternative I propose is to focus on creating a life you never need to retire from. A life that actually fulfills you and sustains you naturally. A life so engaging that the idea of retiring from it feels like a punishment an amazing life. Now, you might be thinking, you know, Dylan, this isn't realistic. And if this is the case, I want you to tell me why, okay? The internet has completely changed the working world. Before COVID, the idea of remote working was untenable for most companies. Now, pretty much every company does it. And if you play it smart, you can completely uncouple your time from your income and your income from your location. You can make more than most doctors and travel the world as you do it. So don't let anyone tell you it isn't 
possible, okay? They most likely gave up a long time ago and want you to give up too. There is absolutely no reason that you can't create your dream life and you don't need to wait until your knees are screwed and you can't remember your wife's name, okay? If you give yourself a solid five years and create a plan, you can absolutely get there. Do you remember what I said earlier about scarcity versus abundance and how a scarcity mindset makes you think there isn't enough to go around? Well, there's another way it really screws up your chances of success. It makes you hyper competitive. Now, in our ultra individualistic society, you might think that's a good thing. Competition drives innovation, more technological advancements have occurred, you know, as a result of war, for example, than anything else. Sounds logical, right? Sure, you can make the argument that competition drives success. But it isn't the only thing or even the best thing, especially at this level of the game, okay? Competition is overrated. From a business perspective, it can cripple your maximum product reach and wealth creation. It becomes a battle of who can slightly outdo the other for cheaper and cheaper in some markets. So it's a race to the bottom for everyone. If you actually look at how successful people operate, you'll find that they are excellent collaborators. They're great at manifesting opportunities through cooperation. They play win-win games with everyone, they surround themselves with amazing people that they can learn from, and by the way, when I say successful, I don't just mean has a bunch of money, okay? And that's it. I mean, being as successful as a person, a mansion is pretty cold when you don't have anyone to share it with. And if you're depressed but drive a Bugatti, you're still depressed. So here's a general principle to stick to. If you want to be successful, focus on helping people get what they want. Not just your customers, but the people that you work with too. Focus on looking for win-win games everywhere you go. Get good at playing them, and you'll notice that opportunities grow as fast as your bank account. I'm about to reveal the holy grail here. Are you ready for it? Here it is. If you aren't willing to fail, you aren't ready to succeed. And a big problem is with social media, all we can see is the highlight reel version of success. On some level, we know that, you know, the yacht and the rooftop parties we see all over Instagram are really just telling, you know, 5% of the full story. And logically, we know that success is harder than these people are showing us. But if we all see the best bits, we can't help but build a picture in our minds that success should be very easy. The reality is the most successful people have gotten there because they failed so many times, and I can't understate the importance of this. For example, Harlan Sanders, the founder of KFC, got rejected 1,000 times trying to sell his chicken recipe to restaurants. Thomas Edison, the inventor of the light bulb, was said to have failed over 10,000 times before finding a design that actually worked. Pretty much every successful person got there because of a long history of failures. So if you want to be successful, be willing to fail. But you know, there is a catch here as well, right? Does that mean you should just bang your head against a locked door 10,000 times hoping that you're going to get in? Not at all. Doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is a bloody ridiculous idea. That's not the exact quote from Albert Einstein, uh, but you get the picture, right? There's such a thing as failing forwards. To fail forward, see every setback as a chance to re-examine what you're doing. Become an expert at reviewing your progress and coming up with better and different ways of doing things. Embrace the art of experimentation. And if you have a solid vision for the future and you combine it with an experimental attitude and willingness to fail, then you're simply unstoppable. Nothing will stand in your way. And Thomas Edison, knew that he wanted to find a way to light a room without the use of a candle. With sheer determination, he found a way and so can you. Well, you don't need to invent the light bulb, we already have that, but do something else. In an interview in 2013, entrepreneur Tim Ferriss had this to say about money. It's totally okay to have a lot of nice things. If it is addiction to wealth, like in Fight Club, the things you own end up owning you. And it becomes a surrogate for things like long-term health and happiness, connection, then it becomes a disease state. But if you have nice things and not fear having them taken away, then it's a good thing because money is a really valuable tool. 
If that's good enough for Tim Ferriss, it's probably good enough for us as well, right? So if you're able to fully appreciate what you already have, then you'll be able to appreciate more good stuff when it comes your way. But if you feel the need to, you know, have more to compensate for something missing in yourself, missing in your life, you'll never be satisfied, no matter how much you get. It's not all about how much you have, it's also about how deeply you're able to appreciate what you have. It took me achieving all my goals to really get the value of this message. Success didn't make me happy because I already had enough to begin with. I just wasn't appreciating it like I do now. So on your journey to success, be on the grind, but don't forget to switch your phone off when having dinner with your family. Don't forget to enjoy your morning coffee before getting to work and listen to the birds on your way to the gym and let the people in your life know how important they are to you because you know, life is short as everyone says it's cliche because it's true and you don't want to miss it. No amount of financial success is worth it and I really promise you that. So if you want to learn more about how I personally make money online, check out the link in the description below this video where it'll take you to a free training that will help you earn your first $10,000 online. Otherwise, hopefully you liked the video. If you liked the video, like the video. Subscribe to the video if you want to get more videos like this and I'll see you in the next video.